Hey guys, welcome back to the Rusty Beauties channel. In this episode, we're going to continue working on this uh, TR6 transmission, which came to us with an A-type overdrive installed on it, and it needed overhauling. After we took it apart, it turned out that it's not worth overhauling because it would be way too expensive. So we switched the idea to installing a J-type overdrive on this same transmission. But in order to do that, we need to replace the main shaft so it matches the J-type instead of the A-type. Also, the transmission had a little problem, some grinding noise that we needed to address. So we took it apart and in the last video we started reassembling it by installing the counter shaft first and the reverse gear. And we also examined all the rest of the parts on the main shaft and we found out that we have a broken top hat bushing on the second gear, which we found a replacement for. And now in this video, we're going to start measuring the end play of all the three gears on their bushing and all the rest of the measurements that we need to take before we're sure that we can assemble this transmission. All right, so let's see how we're gonna measure the three bushings here. We need to measure the first, the second, and the third. They need to protrude four to eight tau. So when it is compressed from both sides, from washers and stuff, like there's a washer here, there's this gear on the other side, let's say. So when things are pressed against each other, these gears should still be able to spin because if our bushing is worn, then the gear is gonna be compressed and it's not gonna spin properly, it's gonna overheat, etc., etc. Uh, so let's do that first with the easy gears that are first and third, because they don't have the hat, they are cylindrical. This one has the flange here and it's gonna be trickier, but let's do third, for example. So this is why I saved those washers from the other transmission. We can put them here to make sure that the bushing and the gear are in flush with each other. And now we can measure here to see if this protrudes and if it does, how much. Let's try with 5 tau. So this is 5. We can take a straight edge, put it across the bushing and see. So this is... No. So let's try four. Okay, four feet. We have four tau, so that's good. Let's try number one the same way. We need this again here. Yeah, four, four goes easily. No, this one is five. Yeah, this is tight, but yeah. So this one is 5 tau, again, that's between 4 and 8. So that's perfect. And now number 2, that's the trouble here, because if we put the washers there and we flip it around, we can't, I don't know, maybe we can. That's what the... That's what the manual calls for, but it's not very easy to do it this way. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the bushing out and we're gonna measure the width of the gear from this surface here to this surface. And we're gonna measure the bushing and we're gonna compare the measurement. So the entire bushing is 1.2 75, 80, 84, 3. So that's the width of the entire bushing. Now let's see what the flange is. So the flange is 0 0.125, 0. Okay, so if we subtract this from the initial number, that's going to be Three, four, nine, five, six, nine, seven, nine, two, five, one, 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 one,
So now if we subtract this from this, that's gonna give us the end play of the gear on top of the bushing. So 0.0042. So we have 4.2 tau of end play of this gear. So all bushings are good to go. Now let's see, there's another measurement that we need to take. Okay, now we need to measure the overall clearance of the whole cluster that consists of third and second gear so when they are installed and we have a circlip actually and we have this circlip here the bushings the actual bushings need to have between three and nine tau end play or some manuals say between uh, seven and twelve tau so i would consider it between three and twelve so we can measure that by just installing the bushings without the gears and the washers that need to be there so first this washer goes it has direction with this channel here towards the gear but that doesn't really matter now so this goes there then we're gonna put our bushing without the gear we're gonna put the other bushing because that's how they ride then we're gonna put this washer because that's what goes there and then I have this circlip from the other transmission and you know how hard it was to take it out from there so I'm just gonna cut this in two and we're gonna use one half because or we can use both halves but at least it's gonna be easy to remove them so <clears throat> let me cut it first okay I cut it and I made sure to remove the burr from the edges so it doesn't give us a false measurement and now we can shove it down there okay so now let's see how much end play we have here i don't really understand why we need an end play here between the bushings i understand why we need the end play for the gears but that's what the manual calls for so let's see here yeah three goes easily let's try five yeah five is very tight five five is pretty tight good so we have five tau end play here we're still having trouble taking this apart <laughs> okay. so this washer goes back there this bushing comes back here and this comes back here and this comes back here so <clears throat> now we have to do the same for this side for first gear and this is assembled the same way the washer the bushing bushing has a direction we have to be careful with that the other washer the bearing I'm gonna try to tap it in okay. I'm gonna put another washer here to make sure that this is where we hit and I'm gonna tap it with the hammer gently All the way in later we're gonna have to tap it out a little bit now this is another washer from another transmission okay so now here we can put the washer that comes after it and the circlip make sure that the circlip is in its groove by spinning it a little yeah and now we're gonna tap the bearing back out until it hits the circlip because now it's pressed all the way in and it, there's no end play there for sure if there is end play it's here between the circlip and the washer and we don't want it there okay so now there must be end play here 
let's check it. Okay. Three is perfect. Here is four. Okay, yeah. So four, four is better. So it's four tau. Four tau of end play is perfect. So now we can take it apart again and then we're gonna inspect the hubs and we're gonna be ready to start assembling. Okay, so our measurements are good. We don't need to measure anything anymore, but just so you know, if your measurements are not okay, you can always play with the adjuster washers. They have different thicknesses available. So you can buy thicker or thinner and that can adjust your end play. We are good though, so we don't need to change anything. So let's take a look at the hubs now. So we have the two synchro rings on both sides. We will explain later how they work. And inside we have the hub. So this is the whole hub assembly. We have the ring outside and we have the hub inside with three bows. Where did the third bow go? I lost it. It's here. Okay, so there are three bows and there are three springs inside as well. Now these springs are quite important about two things. One, to keep the selector ring in place so it doesn't pop out of gear. And two, about the pressure that is applied on the synchro ring and accordingly on the gear from the synchro ring. If your springs are too weak, your car might pop out of gear and also your synchro ring might not get enough pressure on the taper of the gear and not do its job, you know. So it is important these springs are in a good shape. So there are ways to measure this and maybe I can do that in a different video, but these here, I can feel they are in a good shape. So I didn't go into trouble of measuring them because it involves scales, etc. So I might do that in a separate video, but just keep in mind that it's a good idea maybe to change this spring when you're rebuilding your transmission. They're not expensive. So this hub looks good. There's no problems with it. We're gonna assemble it again. This one doesn't have a direction, but the other one does. So we have to be careful with direction. We can put back the springs inside, put the bows, and now we can slide it back in. And we need to push on the bows at the same time so they can go in which is tricky because you need more hands than what you normally have there you go so now when you when you push this slightly it clicks that's that's the row of the bows it clicks right in the center so this hub is ready. These simple rings are not gonna be installed, but just so you know how they go, they have these three tabs that go into these three holes, like this, and this one too. And that's the whole hub assembly. But again, we're gonna install new synchro rings here. And the last one is this hub, which now, you can see it is the same thing but this one has a protruded end here and this one is not so when we assemble it we have to pay attention to that let's take a look at the bows and everything here the splines look okay these bows don't want to come out well if they don't want to come out gonna force them okay so we have everything okay here so again I'm gonna assemble it so we don't lose the parts and we are ready to start assembling tomorrow and of course the two rings the two synchro rings we're gonna explain how they work in the next video there you go and then we're gonna install new synchro rings there too and this and our input shaft with the two new bearings here this is everything that we need 
to start assembling now. All right, so that's everything that we needed to do before we start the assembling. Of course, when we start assembling, we're gonna take each and every part, we're gonna clean it, we're gonna grease it, and then we're gonna put it on the shaft and in the box, etc., etc. But all our measurements are done, everything is up to spec, so we are good to go. That's gonna happen in the next video because this one, I think we have more than enough for one video. So that's gonna be it for tonight, guys. And I wanna thank you again for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for supporting my channel on Patreon and uh, via PayPal. I really, really appreciate all your support, guys. So if you haven't become a Patreon yet and you wish to become one, you can follow the link in the description below and that's gonna take you to my Patreon page and uh, there you can see three different options of how you can support the channel or if you want to make a one-time donation you can also send a paypal payment to elin.yakov at trustabilities.com or if you're in canada you can uh, send an e-transfer to that uh, email address as well um, but as always i want to remind you also that uh, even if you don't support me financially i still appreciate you being here watching and commenting and sharing and all this good stuff this is also a support that, that i appreciate the financial support doesn't buy you anything it's only a way to say thank you if you feel like it and with that said guys i'm gonna sign off and i'll see you in the next one bye